In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have prayed this day. In my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit, have unlocked for us the gates of eternity. Grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he had been held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. For the Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Simon Peter answered him, 
Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Three times Jesus asked Peter if he loved him. Now why three times? Well, one reason was that so that Peter could make up the three times he denied Jesus on that first Holy Thursday night. Now no, Jesus did not need Peter to apologize three times, but Peter needed to express his love three times and Jesus knew it. But what else did Jesus know? And this would actually be a blessing to Peter and not an uncomfortable moment for him. Three is the number of the Trinity. Thus, along with the number seven, the number of perfection. So, for example, when we at Mass say God is holy, 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 the triple expression is a way of saying that God is the holiest of all. So, with Peter being given the opportunity to tell Jesus three times that he loved him, it's an opportunity for him to express his love in the deepest of ways. So, we have a triple confession of love and a triple undoing of Peter's denial going on. This should reveal then our own need to love God and seek his mercy in a triple way. In other words, in a perfect way. So when you tell God that you love him, is it perfect? How deep does it go? Is it more just kind of like nice words you throw up there? Or is it total, all-consuming love? Is your love of God something that you mean to the fullest extent of who you are, or something that needs a little bit of work? Now, of course, we all need to work on love, and that's why this passage should be so significant to us. We should be able to hear Jesus asking us the question three times. And we should realize he's not satisfied with the simple, well, yeah, Lord, I love you. He wants to hear it again and again. And he asks us this because he knows we need to express his love in the deepest of ways. So what do we have to come to the point of? Just like Peter. Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. That must be our ultimate answer. But the triple question also gives us the opportunity to express our deepest longings for his mercy. We all sin. We all deny Jesus in one way or another. But the good news is that Jesus is always inviting us to let our sin be the motivation for deepening our love, for coming back to Him fully. See, He doesn't sit and stay angry at us. He doesn't pout. He doesn't hold our sin over our heads because He's not like us. But He does ask us for the deepest of sorrow and complete conversion of heart. He wants us to turn from our sin to the fullest extent just like he did with Peter. So think about the depth of your love for God, for the Holy Spirit, and of course for our Lord Jesus, and how well do you express it. Make a choice to express your love in that triple way, that perfect way. Let it be deep, sincere, and a love that will never be taken back. And the Lord will receive this act of your heart and return it back to you a hundredfold. Placing our trust in the God's hands, let's come before him now with our prayers and intercessions. For the church, that the people of God will always live with dedicated and committed hope for heaven, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayers. 
that the authority of God in heaven will guide the actions of those who govern us here on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christian husbands and wives will be strengthened in their loving commitment to one another, modeling the union of Christ and the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of our graduates, that God will bless them with courage, enthusiasm, and clear direction. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayers. For all the faithful departed, that they may enjoy eternal life with the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who are struggling, especially financially, that God will restore what might have been lost and encourage all not to lose faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And through the grace of the ascension, that we, that we will be blessed to keep our hearts and minds fixed on the things of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for the special intention for which this Mass is being offered, for the repose of the soul of Lily Pulsifer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Please take a moment to bow your heads and in silence ask God for whatever you need. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, thank you as always for receiving our prayers. May we never take for granted the peace that comes from being in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual children. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and wonderful His holy church. Look merciful, O Lord, and pray upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, that they may become acceptable to you, and let the coming of the Holy Spirit cleanse our consciences. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gaze in wonder, mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended, not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, would be confident to follow him, for he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are clad. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. 
May holy therefore be his return by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Sayer's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. But not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Now, for those of you here with us at home, it's time now for our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. For God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant we pray, this banquet which you give us may bring everlasting love. Through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the Mass, it is it. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil servants, who brought about the world, seek the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. 